Greetings, I'm Wesley Hahn, agronomist with Tiger Sow Products. Thank you for joining us today for a brief video discussing the use of sulfur in wheat production. Wheat has a high demand for sulfur and uh, comparing that to corn, it can be even higher than corn on a per bushel basis. Sulfur can be a, a high yield limiting factor and sometimes second only to nitrogen. Sulfur is needed for optimum yield as well as protein content in the wheat and it's that protein content that influences the high quality baking flour. To better understand how we utilize sulfur and the sulfur forms as we uh, manage our nutrient management programs in wheat, first we have the sulfate forms. That includes ammonium sulfate, potassium sulfate, ammonium thiosulfate, as well as the sulfur forms, uh, sulfur bentonite, such as our Tiger XP. Note that in ammonium thiosulfate, it is composed of one half sulfate and one half elemental sulfur. And hopefully as you all are aware, the sulfate forms dissolve in soil moisture and can be readily available for plant uptake. Compared to the sulfur bentonite, such as our Tiger XP, it's composed of uh, elemental sulfur. Elemental sulfur must go through an oxidation process, which is the breakdown by soil bacteria, which native or naturally occurring in the soils. So when using uh, Tiger XP, we must uh, manage accordingly such that uh, we build up the population of the microbes in the soil such that we increase the speed at which this reaction takes place. So when managing sulfate forms, I think uh, we need to be aware that we manage them according to the form and the specific crop, in this case, wheat. And with that, we must keep in mind that we manage sulfur similar to the way we manage nitrogen. We don't manage uh, anhydrous ammonia the same way you manage urea or UAN. So here again, incorporating different forms, different sources, we manage those in corresponding manner. One step in that management process is the application and application timing of our Tiger XP product. Uh, if you're working with uh, winter wheat, Tiger XP can be applied prior to planting or you can apply it at green up. Just be sure you supply sufficient sulfur to meet your anticipated yield goal. Now, if you're applying uh, Tiger XP to a field that uh, has never had any uh, elemental sulfur in the past to build up the native bacteria population. Some farmers have concerns about not having enough uh, uh, sulfate early in the growing season as we uh, build up that uh, population of bacteria when we start feeding them with Tiger XP. So sometimes they want to mix some ammonium sulfate in with the Tiger XP and that's a reasonable uh, approach. And we suggest mixing about 40% of Tiger XP with 60% ammonium sulfate. Option two is fall apply. Soil temperatures will be low and that's below the optimum temperature that the bacteria would be active. So therefore there's no sulfur oxidation taking place which would result in no sulfate leaching potential. And the freezing, thawing, the wetting, drying will further fracture those sulfur pastilles into much smaller pieces, which will enhance the uh, sulfur oxidation process when the soil temperature rises in the spring. And then option three is to apply sufficient Tiger XP ahead of the previous crop. For example, if you have soybeans and you're going to follow those soybean crop with wheat, then provide enough sulfur for the soybeans and the wheat. If you have soybeans and anticipating 60 bushels per acre, and you're going to follow those soybeans with the wheat and you anticipate 75 bushels per acre, 
then that would equate to 40 pounds of actual sulfur per acre. So we convert the actual sulfur to uh, XP, and that would, would be 47 pounds per acre of Tiger XP application. That would be sufficient for two crops. Now granted, the oxidation process of Tiger XP is gradual. It is not sudden. So therefore, you will have carryover. And with that carryover, you can benefit the wheat crop in this type of application scenario. A popular question I receive is, how much sulfur do I need to apply? Well, obviously that's a function of the crop that you're working with. As I indicate on the previous slide, the uh, wheat and the soybeans required 40 pounds per acre of actual sulfur. But when using a soil test to analyze for the sulfur content, understand that there's no standardized test for sulfur. So different labs use different methods. And since there's no standardization, there's a lack of uh, potential for predicting a yield response. So considering that, we re recommend conducting a tissue analysis in conjunction with soil samples to at least obtain a snapshot in time as to the sulfur presence in the soil. Now, another way to analyze that on your farm is to conduct strip tiles. You know, choose a field and split the field. Apply part of that field with Tiger XP, leave the other side uh, not treated with sulfur, and then harvest those separately to compare the yield differences. And we suggest that you do this over in multiple fields or at least do it in the same field over multiple years to confirm uh, specific needs of sulfur on a field by field basis. So as we consider that potential need, we need to think about crop uptake versus crop removal. And what we mean by the uptake is the amount of sulfur that that crop is gonna need to manifest its yield potential. Crop removal is the amount of sulfur that's removed when we harvest the grain. So with that, we must think about the fact that, hey, with uptake compared to the removal rate, if we make a recommendation based on this removal rate, we may shortchange our uptake needs. Now, granted, depending upon the year, there's varying amounts of sulfur that can be released from the mineralization of organic matter. But the real challenge there is it's very difficult to make any prediction as to how much is going to be mineralized and released and available in a given year. So therefore, since sulfate reacts very similar to nitrate, we recommend following the uptake uh, rates as a recommendation. To make it a little simpler for you to uh, make a uh, sulfur recommendation, for example, in wheat, uh, you want to be able to look at uh, the rate, and with wheat, that's 0.24 pounds of sulfur per expected harvested bushel. For example, in the previous uh, table, we was uh, anticipating 75 bushels wheat. You take the 75 bushels times 0.24, that would give you the 18 pounds that I had listed in the previous slide. And this graph shows uptake by wheat. This was taken from a thesis done at Kansas State University showing that uh, sulfate uptake uh, maximizes or peaks at flowering time. And notice that continues all the way through maturity and the uh, grain field period. And this uh, chart shows uh, different growth stages based on the Feeks growth stage scale and here again, flowering occurs at uh, 10.5, and that's one growth stage prior to physiological maturity. So here again, you're at the very end of the growth of wheat, and that's when the uh, uptake of sulfur is maximized. So with the Tiger XP product, we get gradual release, and as the temperature and, and the soil moisture and all is present, we actually have potential to have optimum output or conversion take place 
of the uh, sulfur to sulfate conversion. So taking a look at uh, yields that we at Tiger Saw have conducted, and these are seven trials over the last four years. These trials were conducted uh, in Alberta and Saskatchewan. We used a uh, untreated control. That is, this one did not receive any sulfur, but did receive the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium at 59 bushels, compared to Tiger XP at 64.7 bushel and a Tiger Combo product at 64.7. Tiger Combo is actually ammonium sulfate coated with our Tiger 90 product. And note that the yields are the same between the two products, so hence, uh, the later season and release of the uh, Tiger XP being somewhat faster uh, shows that uh, it is uh, equivalent in uh, maximizing yield potential as compared to the uh, Tiger sulfur in combination with ammonium sulfate. So hopefully you find this beneficial and if you have further questions, I uh, suggest you contact your account manager or you can go directly to our website at tigersaw.com. So with that, I thank you for joining us and have a good day.